Well, uh, that's I've been asked the to remind the panelists that five minutes now, is Professor going to be monitored Steve by Chan someone who's also a ninth degree Department black belt in karate. Uh, Politics and International Studies, University of London. Senator. Now uh, it's time for the panel discussion. And I'm sure he's uh, referring to Senator Olorunimbe Mamora. Okay. Thank you very much, Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Let me thank um, Jack Straw for the very beautiful presentation. And um, every nation has its own history. And uh, by and large, the history tends to affect what that nation does at a given point in time. But history remains history. And we should not allow that to stop us from attaining our goals. For me, I could get from Jack Straw's uh, presentation the issue of election. Election, 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 which is a major pillar in democracy. Orderly succession through free, fair, credible, in fact, I would say electoral process. Because you have the pre election phase, intra election phase, and you have post election phase. And if things are not put right in these phases, you have situations of uh, disenfranchisement because people were not properly registered to even vote. We also have issues on the day of election, logistics, and uh, personal transportation and all that. And of course, post-election, where you have someone not duly elected staying in office for almost a whole tenure. I think this is not good for democracy. Again, the issue of rule of law is critical. Our maybe governor here but for an activist judiciary, I doubt he will be, if he will be sitting here today as governor because of overbearing executive. Again, democracy, good governance. You cannot have democracy and good governance in the absence of virile opposition. And thank God, Jack Straw mentioned it. It's not coming from Senator Mamora that APC is in place now as a virile opposition. <laughs> Hitherto, the voice of opposition in this country had been drowned until the coming of APC, which is poised to give the present uh, government at the center a uh, run for its um, uh, money, if you like. Then, of course, the issue of strong institutions is critical to democracy and good governance. Strong institutions, not strong men, really. Strong institutions because men and women, they come and they go. But if the institutions remain strong, of course, the system will run and run very well. Well, for my years in public office so far, I have been in the legislature. The legislature needs to do more. The legislature in Nigeria at the moment is probably working fairly well at the federal level. I cannot say the same of the states, where most of the legislative houses are in the pocket of the governors. And it does no good for the system. We need a situation where oversight functions will be truly performed the way they are expected to be performed. And that's putting, putting the executive in check 
as much as possible. And uh, well, I know I have just uh, 30 seconds. 20 seconds, <laughs> right. Of course, the issue of accountability and transparency, we cannot go on. Of corruption. The problem we have, as far as I'm concerned, is that rather than confront corruption, we seem to be nurturing corruption. And we don't make examples out of people. Until we do that, we will not be making what we should do in terms of democracy and good governance. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator. In fact, you brought that in at exactly five minutes. So we're delighted now to move on to Professor Joyce Akaninwa and listen to her as well. Thank you. Your Excellency. I just want to observe from Jack Shaw's lecture that um, the democracy and the problems we find in democracy is not peculiar to Nigeria. What is also very important from his lecture that to know that democracy is for the people. We are talking about people, the masses. And I noticed from his lecture that there must be equality in anything we are doing to achieve democracy. He has talked about elections, fair and free elections. I think that is very paramount. Because if the people are electing people to speak for them, they should bring the right people and the electoral body should give them the chance to bring the right people of their choice so that they can represent them very well. That is very important. Again, talking about um, corruption and bribery in, uh, in Nigeria, like my colleague said, it's something that we need to put serious argument about. Are we doing the right thing about those who catch that either took bribes or uh, took money away from the government forces, or that are even um, pull, pulling the money of the masses into their private pockets? We have institutions that are going after such people. When they get them, what do they do with them? Do they really show example so that others can learn? I'm thinking that if these institutions show examples on people that are already caught doing this, others will learn from that. Again, talking about the winner taking it all. That does not help democracy. Even in our electoral system, even in elections, political parties are bound to be there, oppositions are bound to be there. When a winner comes up, everybody joins. And everybody will put hands together uh, to make democracy work. And I'm saying that in Nigeria, we need to be transparent in everything we do no matter the hierarchy. We, we need to be very, very transparent in what we are doing in our electoral system. Apart from that, what do we gain from our democracy if everybody doesn't get this equal distribution of our economy, our rights, our freedom? Democracy is about equality, no discrimination. So what I'm trying to get from his lecture is that those at the helm of affairs should make sure that there is no discrimination. Even in our federal economy or state economy, even in our ideologies, infrastructures, whatever it is, there should be equality. And that's the only way we can achieve democracy. 
I think he talked about... Um, 30 seconds. Oh, 30 seconds. <laughs> Uh, okay, he's talking about abolishing corruption totally. I wonder if we can really abolish corruption totally. I'm sure that he's going to give us some strategies that will help us do that. And I'm, I'm hoping that we can do that if he tells us and if we all come together and make sure that corruption is abolished. Thank you.